Well, this is what the video is all about. Check this out. That is right, I finally got something that has been six years in the making. This will quench some of your thirst on what has been needed to be done to the three rotor for the longest time. Out. Yes, Garrett Turbo, Turbos by Garrett, has delivered one of the sickest improvements for the three rotor in uh, my lifetime. Mind you, Abel got to it first, so he repackaged it, so this isn't exactly how these turbos come, but, but check this out. Oh, hello there. I'm gonna formally welcome a newest member of my family and introduce you all to Baby 42. Now this is a 4202 GTX, so the GTX is the billet wheel, and uh, she's ready to put down some pretty mean numbers. This turbo is a 76 millimeter compressor wheel so it's slightly smaller by slightly I mean four millimeters smaller of an inducer compressor wheel so if you measure this it's magically going to be 76 versus the 80 mil on the old one but enough of just looking at this one and trying to talk about that other one let's compare them side by side before we compare them side by side let me show you the other piece of the turbo this is something that you can order separately and in this case came separately so this is very heavy for good reason. This is a lot of metal, it's cast iron, and it is a 1.15 AR. So what does that mean? That means area compared to radius. And you start from the center here, like good old math class, from this distance to here is a certain area, the ratio being 1.15. And as you get closer on radius, the smaller the area is. And of course, this is divided. Now I don't know how that's gonna play into my current setup, you know, three, three rotors don't really go into two housing divided pieces, but we will see how this treats us. I might end up trimming this down a little bit. We might even go with a slightly larger housing. We will find out, and you guys are along for the ride. So the very first step we're gonna do is put the turbine housing onto the turbo without touching the blades. There we go. Now there's a uh, good old V-band set up already here. We're gonna gently get that around the oil and water lines. Get the, there we go. So now we have a properly set up turbo with its exhaust housing installed. Of course, you're gonna need the nut for this, but I'm just showing you this turbo overall. So this is what it looks like now. That is pretty damn beefy. I'm gonna give you some different angles of it so you can get an idea of how big this turbo is. Mind you, this is much more efficient than the S480 I have on the car currently. So this is the defining moment, the old turbo versus the new one. Let's take a look. Oh, well, there we go. They look relatively similar from this point of view and you can see it. There is the billet wheel. There's a older style wheel. This is 78 millimeter. This is 80 millimeter. The uh, compressor housings are fairly similar, but you can tell one is much more up to date. It's ultimately the exhaust housings that make the biggest difference on this. You can see already this one's much larger, which explains the lag and overall high top end ability. But something else you'll notice right there is the difference between T6 and T4. Coincidentally, they're both divided when they shouldn't be, but uh, gives you an immediate comparison. Something else that's absolutely beautiful about this one is the center part of the assembly is not only oil lubricated, but water cooled, whereas the older style was just oil in, oil out. So it becomes even more apparent that not just the fact that this is T6 versus T4, it's also just simply the AR. This is a 1.32, and it surely shows that, whereas this is 1.15. <laughs> is this going to make a massive difference on response? You can bet it will, but we're, we're biggest concern right now is that will this cut off the top end airflow? Will this thing be able to breathe at the top end? So I broke down and turned into every other YouTuber, and I now have a Joey, and look at this. 
you can see why. At least let me justify the reason is you can get a killer camera angle like this. You can definitely see the uh, exhaust housing to exhaust manifold to housing size difference from T4 to T6 right there. The rust to the beautiful part of the metal. But uh, this kind of gives you an idea of how a smaller exhaust housing on a turbo fits so much better in a small engine bay. Of course, everything else is kind of the same. It looks pretty menacing, even unpolished. Uh, in this case, what I'm kind of hoping is obviously we got the same V-band on the exhaust uh, output, but the housing, I wanted to make sure I get it as far away from the front runners on the lower intake manifold for the first rotor. Uh, when I say as far away as possible, I'm talking probably like less than a fraction of an inch of difference, but still, every little bit matters. Granted, I don't know if this 1.15 exhaust housing is going to be the final one. We might go slightly larger, but uh, of course you want to kind of plan for that, plan for potential changes. But God, that looks good in there, doesn't that? So out of all the positives about this turbo, there is one minor drawback, and it has nothing to do with the turbo itself. Take a look at the center assembly. We've got oil in, oil out. Huh. Now I have water in and water out. What type of water? Sadly not water injection. Good old coolant. That means that my already horribly sized radiator is even more inadequate. You can't see it in this angle. I'm sure I'll include a picture of it in the video. The whole front of it, almost the whole front of it, and the bottom corner down there is covered in JB Weld. I took a arrow to the knee and uh, a rock to the radiator and away we go. Sadly, this radiator is no longer gonna cut it. This one is a two inch core. We've got Bell Intercoolers, who makes radiators, intercoolers, and oil coolers, helping out with the new one. A little side note though, is obviously the water cooling is gonna help with the spike in temperature of this whole assembly once you do some hard pulls and let off or are continuing to do hard pulls. On my car, just the oil bearing, oil journal bearing one alone, so you got the little restrictor there to right size how much oil goes through the turbo, that was adequate. And what's very interesting was the stock R1 dual oil coolers, which are hidden down there, did a pretty damn good job at getting the heat out of the oil system as quick as possible. So I am very pleased with that, but I did see a massive spike every time I would do a hard pull and let off. That spike is now going to go through the water. For my extended family who's wondering if I'm going to have baby pictures for Christmas cards or anything like that, this is the closest you're going to get, just a freeze frame of this. So we're about to see my little son turn into a little spaghetti shredder. Is that right? So what do you guys think? Is my new child the right solution for this infamous three rotor? Or did I go a little too small with the exhaust housing? Some of you are very well versed in this turbo already, I guarantee it. I've got quite a few people who legitimately race and do quite a few nasty things far beyond my ability. So if you know, let me know, what do you think? GTX 4202 are the right size? Or did I go too small? Of course, Abel's opinion, too small, by far too small. But what you're looking for from me is to make this car 900, 850, 900 horsepower to the wheels with the best boost response possible. So this little bit of content is more for Elliot from TurboSource or Turbolone. He is uh, crazy enough to decide to help me remake this manifold and I want him to see exactly how it fits in the engine bay. What's important is that those little pain in the ass runners Thank God they have those little top pieces right up there. They have little divots in the manifold. That's absolutely necessary because, watch this. I'm gonna back this out. And as I go to remove it, you can see it's right against the shock tower frame, eight, whatever, unibody frame. So you have to utilize the fact that there's some give in each of those flange areas. But for those of you that are more like me and like to look at actual numbers, real reasons why I need that new turbocharger, this is probably the best example right here. What you see here is the fifth, five gears that I'm rowing through on my record-breaking half-mile attempt. So a couple of the different color lines, one is the very top one, which is the blue, which is coolant temp. So you can see it tends to rise as soon as you're at the end of the run. 
even though it kind of rises halfway through it. The most important line, really, is the yellow one. The yellow one is boost, and so what you can see here is five gears, first through fifth on a stock FD transmission with a 4.1 rear end. So we've got about, I mean, you can see between each of the gears, right about here, looking at the green line, I'm shifting about 5,500 RPM and then topping it out at, well, 8,000. These numbers look a little off, but uh, I can guarantee it's around that range. What you can see is the blue line, the light blue line here, is me completely letting off the pedal because I'm on a stock FD trans. I don't want to shear the thing while my record-breaking run attempts and then have to drive or tow it uh, three miles or three hours home, which, because of the rain, I ended up doing anyway. But what you see, the most important fact here is full boost, which uh, on this thing says about 25 PSI. You can see it up here in, in fifth gear, 25 PSI. But even in third gear, it doesn't get to 22 PSI until this point in the RPM range, which, if you go over to this, is about 6,500 RPM. So even though in the older videos I was saying that that turbo wasn't kicking on until 5,000 RPM, it wasn't even building full boost until 6,500 RPM. That's insane. So you can see right there, just on the table, between this part of the gear and this part of the gear, there's, there's really not full performance. It's not just the top peak horsepower when you're looking at car builds, you're looking at the horsepower under the curve, and there is not a lot of horsepower under this part of the curve.